Today is, excuse me, August 25th, 2020, and I'm Ruth Cambar, and I'm with Kathy Yako, and um, we will be interviewing her. I am a rep from the Assyrian Studies Association, um, oral historian and archivist uh, of the Assyrian American diaspora, and we are proceeding with this interview. Could you please state your full name, Kathy? Uh, Kath, Kathleen Louise Yako Skira. And Kathy, will you provide permission for us to use this interview and to have it cataloged with the and archived with the Yonkers Public Library digital, digitized collection, the Assyrian Studies Association, and the Library of Congress, and also for the use for researchers, students, and for any educational yes okay all right so the first question we have for you is do you know why you received the name from your parents i'm sorry said do you know why you received the name you have oh, okay yes um my grandmother was on my father's side was named kathleen and i think it was a family name that went back probably several generations. And when and where were you born? Uh, Wilmington, uh, Delaware in December 10th, 1946. And did you grow up in Yonkers? No, I grew up in Wilmington, Delaware. And tell us, I know that you've moved to Yonkers at one point in your life. Could you give us a little background about that? Sure. I moved to Yonkers actually twice in my life. In 1995, I lived in Cornwall, New York, which was Orange County, and I went through a, a divorce and took a job in um, Dobbs Ferry, a children's village, and I moved to Yonkers, uh, an apartment complex. And then in 1999, I bought a house in Nyack, but sold it when I met my current husband and we bought a house together in Yonkers in 2005. So why do you keep coming back to Yonkers? Why <laughs> did you? Well, at that point, um, my husband was working in lower Manhattan and Nyack was just a little too far and he had moved with me and um, I was working in Dobbs Ferry and I knew Yonkers and it, it was a very good choice and also it had an attachment for me because my great uncle a syrian uh, uh, uncle uh, marshall yako had lived there and uh, i was also involved in uh, blue door gallery and a bunch of arts activities in yonkers and so um can you tell us a little bit about those activities that you were involved in and where uh, the blue door gallery is located the uh, Blue Door Galleries in downtown Yonkers on Riverdale Avenue. And I think it was 1917 in, in September, I organized a show there about the Assyrian, uh, with Ruth's help, uh, of the Assyrian heritage of Yonkers. And uh, I was also at Phillips Hall Manor. In 2017, right? Not 1917. Yeah. Did I say 19? I meant 17, yeah. All righty. And, um, it goes fast. <laughs> and do you have siblings? I have three brothers, uh, Don, Paul, and Peter. Okay, and is that the birth order of yes. your family? You're yes. the youngest? Yes, I'm the oldest. You're the oldest, okay. Yes. And um, who grew up in your house? I mean, excuse me, uh, your parents. What are their first names, their full uh, names? Uh, my father's Jesse Craig. He was named after his father who was a Syrian, uh, Jesse was his name, and my mother's name was Elizabeth Jean uh, Betts was her maiden name, and she grew up in Delaware. My father grew up in Chicago. And does your family have a religious background? Uh, yes, I grew up Episcopalian. And do you identify with that particular religion now? Do you practice? Right. Uh, no, I 
identify culturally, I think, and I keep saying that I need to renew my spiritual identity, but no, I, I do not go to church or anything. Okay. And um, when you were younger, your uncle was um, connected with Yonkers and you said you had fond memories. Can you tell us a little bit about his life in Yonkers? Sure. Uh, it was my great uncle and he came to the United States before uh, SAFO, before the genocide and went I hope I have this right. He went, because I looked at his immigration papers. He went to college in Iowa, uh, Coe College, and, be, and then he went to seminary, I think in New Jersey somewhere, became an ordained uh, Presbyterian minister and um, uh, was assigned to a, a Syrian church in Yonkers. Um, and um, uh, we used to go, I remember one particular visit when, uh, my family, my brothers and I came, and my parents came to visit him, took the train to Manhattan, and then the subway to Yonkers, and Annie Shalom lived with him, Shalom uh, Bedell was her last name, and she cooked a very fancy dinner, they had a small apartment, and we went up on the roof of their building and looked at the lights of Manhattan, I was maybe eight, it was very exciting, so. And w did she prepare Assyrian food? Absolutely, which was just wonderful. She was an amazing cook, yes. Do you have a favorite Assyrian uh, dish? Yes, um, I love dolma. And my mom learned it, I guess, from Annie Shalom or my grandmother, who was English, actually. But she prepared an amazing dolma. And I loved it, yeah. Um, I will tell you that I was looking... I've made a connection with Isaac Adams' great, great granddaughter. Um, and she has one of his books, Persia by a Persian. And she has another book of his. Uh, I can't think of the title right now. But in one of those books, there's a picture of Joseph Adams, her great, great, great grandfather. It's on the other side. And your uncle, Marshall, uh -huh. picture as a little boy. Really? Oh, my Oh, could you send it to me? I'd love to see that. My family would love that too. And I recognize him because of one of your paintings when you colorize. Right, the collage, yeah. Talk a little about your artwork. Um, uh, he's about that age. What's that? He was about that age. Yes, I have a picture, uh, a photograph. That's a f famous family photograph of emigrating from Lake Ermia, I guess it was, Gu or, I'm not sure the town, there were, the, it's Serilin or Gudupak, because they lived in two different towns at, at different times. But it was my Annie Shushin and her husband and my grandfather, who was a single young man then, and Shalom and her husband. And they were in their, you know, 1915 uh, European dress and they were all very excited the guys had straw hats and the ladies had umbrellas and they must have been standing in front of their, their house in, in uh, uh, Gudapa and they were getting ready to leave for the United States. I think it was about 1915. Okay. And Kathy, do you speak Assyrian at all? No, I don't. I saw they had lessons at the church. I was thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful language. Me too. Um, I, actually, I, I know a group of people who are like us who are um, thinking about asking the Gasha to teach us separately So because we're at a different level. So yeah. if that happens, I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, That'd be great. Yeah. And um, so tell us about, and Mike, Mike will pick up at this point. Michael, you want, would you like to know about the education, Kathy's education? Yes, hopefully you can hear me now. I moved to a different Yes, spot I can hear my... you, yes. Oh, great. Yeah, I've had to move around a little bit in the library. Um, yeah, so uh, where did you grow up um, and like what schools did you go to? Okay, I grew up in Wilmington, Delaware. And I actually went to uh, my parents when I was uh, in junior high, moved to the suburbs. And I actually went to high school at Brandywine High School, where Joe Biden just spoke. 
So. Oh, um, really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite exciting to see my school. I haven't seen for, what, 70 years. And, so. and I went okay. to college. Um, my father grew up in Chicago um, and went to University of Illinois. And then he was became, was hired by DuPont. So that's why we were in Delaware. So uh, we lived in near where he worked. I started college at Mary Washington College in uh, Virginia. At that time, University of Virginia was a boys, all boys, and Mary Washington was the girls' school. And then I changed to Boston University because I wanted to study art. And I got a BFA at Boston University and an MFA from um, uh, SUNY New Falls. Oh, interesting. And then what did you do post-graduation? Uh, I taught uh, school and um, for a regular school. And then I decided I wanted to do more or less art therapy. So I taught for 15 years at um, Children's Village in Dobbs Ferry. And I taught um, very much disturbed kids and inner city kids. And, and, uh, and then when I retired from that in 2010, I spent a number of years um, teaching for Arts Westchester. They had an artist. And I actually taught a couple schools in Yonkers. Um, an arts program for elementary school kids. Oh, great. That's really interesting. Yeah. Do you know anything uh, about the... Yeah, go ahead. Um, do you know anything like about the education of your parents and grandparents? Uh, yeah, my granddad came to this country uh, and they were Presbyterian in... Uh, uh, there was a mission, a Presbyterian mission, and my grandfather's parents' family was part of that. His father was also a minister. And they sent my grandfather and my great uncle, and I think my other uncle was great uncle as well, to Coe College in Iowa. And my grandfather then started graduate school at University of Chicago, and he lived in a boarding house where he met my grandmother, whose family ran the boarding house. So that was their education. Uh, my father went to University of Illinois and got his degree in chemical engineering. And my mother went to University of Delaware and had a, a, a degree in chemistry. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where you got up to because I, I missed some of the interview. Um, but it, Ruth, uh, I guess you could take over with the cultural identity questions if you want. Some of that, Michael, you may want to pick up on professions and Kathy can talk about her artwork. Oh, I can show you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Is there anything that you're working on right now? Uh, well, I'll show you some of the ones because I have just not have them hanging up that I had for the uh, show in Yonkers. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm actually work, I've not been teaching anymore, and I'm working on a, a bunch of paintings. Very, uh, let's see. These, if I could do this. This, uh, I, I wanted to, how do I do this? Let's see. Close. I don't know. Oh, I have to stand further back there. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Okay. This is a Sumerian temple. Uh, I got interested in this show, uh, doing the show because I knew my family were immigrants and really had prospered in the United States. And when Donald Trump got elected, I wanted to do something to both honor my family and talk about um, American immigrants. So this is a, uh, the Assyrians have a, a background, ancient, ancient times in the Middle East. And these are some uh, Sumerian, prior to the Assyrian, uh, votums, mm -hmm. little uh, statuettes that people had in their houses and they, in their homes, and then they worship the uh, ancient deities. And underneath it, I have the um, Aramaic alphabet. So it's sort of an homage to the Middle Eastern heritage of the Assyrians. And this mm -hmm. one, this is, um, oops. I know there's a way to do this much better than I'm doing it. All right, there. I'll stand back a little bit. Yeah. That's better. 
And this one is also a temple. And these were little photos I photographed from the Metropolitan Museum. And this one says, blessed is the morning. And then I'll show you one of my, uh, trying to do this better. This is the collage of my uh, grandparents, my granddad and, and family. Let's see, why am I not? Oh, I have to stand on the chair. There. And this is, uh, like I said, this I, I took a photo and tore it up and collaged it and colorized it. And this is uh, the, the two sisters and their husbands and my uncle, and actually um, the younger one, I think is Ishu, I think Marshall had already gone. My great, also a great uncle. And I'm was in touch with his children who live in California. It actually may be Ishu in the picture. I think I'll have to issue. send it to you. Yeah, I think that's Ishu. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. He, he lived with my grandfather and grandmother in Chicago and married very late. And uh, so his children are younger than, much younger than me. And uh, they're both retired doctors. They've done very well. All right, and let's see what else I have. And this is... Uh, a painting, it's the uh, Assyrian tree of life, which is just like the, uh, you know, Jewish tree of life, but this is the mm -hmm. imagery. And I got this off the internet, and, you know, turned it into a painting. I, I swear, I'm going to find out how to do uh, all of this better. And it's okay. It's great. You, it's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's working. All right, I'll show you two more. And these I did from ancient Middle Eastern legends, which are throughout the Middle East. This one is uh, Gilgamesh, the legend of Gilgamesh. And then this other one is, uh, oh, there are two of them. And the other one is Jonah and the whale. And they're very abstracted. They're uh, pieces of collaged uh, canvas and colors and then you can see the whale and the one, and, and then there's sort of a horse. They're very abstract. So, uh, huh. and anyway, oh, and here's one more of my, also my, uh, oh, I don't know if the light's good enough. All right, well, anyway, there's, there's some of them. And, and right now I'm, I'm working on more of a nature series because we're very oh, okay. much in the country and we're doing a lot of hiking and stuff. Oh, and uh, Ruth, you'd be interested in this. The, um, my husband is Jewish, and uh, they, the synagogue got very interested in my Assyrian heritage. And at the library in Garrison, which is a beautiful library, I was supposed to, in April, give a talk on, uh, for the Holocaust Remembrance Day, give a talk on uh, the Assyrian genocide. But now it's been postponed. I don't know when they'll have it. Maybe that you can ask them if they'll let you do it digitally. I, you know, yeah. I was thinking about that because we all thought when we canceled it, September would be fine. Well, September's not fine. So, you know, I, I, I think I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. And they also, on the, the Assyrian uh, Martyrs Day, they also had a prayer, which was very nice, I thought. What is it? Oh, wow. That's it. That's great. Yeah. On August 7th. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm so it looks like you, you've gotten a lot of inspiration from um, Assyrian artwork and like culture in your own pieces. Yes, very much so. Yes. Yes, I call oh, it great. empires and just, uh, you know, the richness of the culture. And the, to me, one of the most inspiring things is the spirituality of that culture, how much they just, their lives were venerating um, the, the beyond in their own form so yeah yeah well they're really great thank you kathy um i do i did have a question about um growing up around assyrian items etc and your culture so um you know you 
learned from your family, history and history and culture, and you know you've shown us the work you have in your house and how it's influenced you. Do you have any particular items that were your family's passed down to you? Uh, my dad um, uh, collected Oriental rugs, and he was sort of his tie to the Middle East. And uh, I, I have a lot of them, and I'm very proud of them. And did you show any family at the at the Blue Door Gallery? I actually had my art prints. We made. A, a, I was so into these photos. We we um, from the Blue Door Gallery. I, we all had a session and sculpted little photos, and sort of channeled the Assyrian culture. And I put them in the gallery on top of a small rug that was half of a saddlebag that uh, my grandfather had when he came to this country. He had all his belongings in that. I, I remember too the um, bookmark you had from your great uncle's Bible. That's right. Can yes. Can you tell Michael? Can you talk about that a little bit? What it was? He had a, a silk bookmark. He put in a Bible which he had in Aramaic, and um, it had all the names of his uh, congregations. And then I, I can't quite remember the saying, but just saying, blessed is the family of man and, and just, you know, blessed is, is everyone. Do you um, speak Aramaic at all or do you know the language? No. Oh, okay. Oh, I did, when I did this art show, I did a workshop with the children of the Maramari church where they make tiles, ceramic tiles, uh, each one with a letter of the Aramaic alphabet. So mm, that's, interesting. That, 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 I know the letters. Mm -hmm. The Marmari Church in Yonkers, correct? Yes. And um, do you, are you aware of uh, when you're, where you're, you, you, that your family in Iran in Persia, and um, do you know why they emigrated to the United States? Uh, for, uh, for opportunity, and also I think because the missionaries were financing their, their college at Coe College. I, I don't think, that, uh, they weren't poor, but my great-grandfather had died um, helping someone was the story and then my grandmother great-grandmother sophie died later um i think from typhoid or something so aunt shalom the one who who helped my uncle with his church in yonkers was pretty much an orphan and raised her younger siblings so i surmise the church sort of took an interest and you know because there apparently my great grandfather was a well-known uh, minister in in Iran and had been a missionary to Afghanistan and at least I th I think that's the case. But anyway, he he was pretty you know well regarded. What was his name? Uh, his name was oh God, uh, Jacob I think. I, I'm now I'm pulling that out of my I, I I if I looked it up I would have it in records I, I should know that yeah. I think it was Jacob because Yako is also Jacob I think that's the way it worked when my parents passed away I got a box of old letters my parents love letters and then for I guess in 1918, um, my grandfather was living in Gary, Indiana. He had, um, I, for whatever reason, he was supposed to go to University of Chicago and become a doctor and go back to Iran, but he had to get a job instead. I, I don't know what happened, that I don't know. But he was living in Gary, Indiana, working in the steel mills. And my grandmother was helping her mother run a rooming house in Chicago, right by the University of Chicago, which is where they had met. But anyway, he wrote her every week and he described, um, they had marches for the Assyrian Relief uh, Association. Grandma, my Nana would cook 
to, he would thank her for cooking for the refugees and, and, uh, and um, he wrote one letter where it was during Sefo and my aunt Shalom had gone back to Persia with her husband who was a doctor and he had died in a refugee camp. Uh, he'd gotten typhus where he was treating people there. And um, in this letter, my grandfather was very worried about, God knows where my, my great aunt was. You know, she was somewhere in Persia and he was very worried about him. And his professor, when he had had in, in Iran, um, he said that he was driven into the desert and uh, God knows what happened to his wife. I, I, you know, that was a very delicate way of, of presenting something pretty awful. And uh, they were driven into the desert and starved. And he said, this was a man of means and, and a man, uh, you know, who I had in the highest esteem. And, uh, you know, he was just, and, you know, it's funny, I, I grew up and I didn't realize my, my grandfather had this history. I remember visiting him as a young child and he would talk about Iran and how wonderful the Urmia area was and he'd speak in Aramaic and, I think he was homesick this whole life, and I, I had no concept of that. They really didn't talk about the hardships. Um, I think they really just wanted to assimilate and mm -hmm. move on, um, and it took time for that to be processed. You know, it's the same thing with uh, the Holocaust. The literature emerged much later, even from survivors. Um, they really didn't write about it. They just wanted life to resume. And right. they were dealing with so much trauma um, of what they had experienced. So it, it, it makes sense. And do you know who any of the perpetrators were that um, may have driven them into the desert? Uh, well, this was, he was hearing it secondhand. He was in Chicago then, but, uh, or Gary, Indiana. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. The, the letter just, uh, and then it, it was also, his letters described what was going on in the United States vis-a-vis -vis the SAFO, the, you know, that they were having marches and trying to raise money. And, but I don't think he was aware of all the particulars in Iran, because I think communication was really difficult. It was hard to get letters out. You know, I, I, I think he, he knew he couldn't get in touch with his sister was, was just terrifying him. And he, eventually they re, were reunited in the United States. Um, yeah, his uh, sister Shalom was married to a doctor and they moved to somewhere in Germany, I think Alsace-Lorraine and, and Shalom lived with them for a while. And then they all moved to the United States and, and Shushan settled in Chicago and eventually Shalom worked with Uncle Marshall at the church in Yonkers. Thank you. Yeah. And so as an Assyrian, um, how would you describe your, your ethnic background to someone who's a non-Assyrian? Um, I would describe my, yeah, people don't understand. They, they think Syrian. So I say Assyrian. And then with, with me, my mother was English, so, or English background. So, you know, it's, uh, I'm a mutt is what I tell people. <laughs> but, but my, and, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say my, my Assyrian background, I'm really proud of, so. You're surrounded by it in your home, so yeah. that's great. And um, I'm just going through these. So I know um, you have a particular appreciation, even though you don't speak the language, um, when you have attended church services at Mar Mari, I recall that you told me what you thought about the act actual language and listening to it. Can you just describe that briefly? Like just it, listening to the people speaking. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And um, the service, the Eastern Orthodox service, it, it seems much more ancient 
that to me than the, the Protestant religions. It just seems to hark back to something very ancient. So, but the language I think is a lot of what does that because it just, it's very soft. Yeah. And um, Kathy, so um, your family and the Assyrian families, do you know where they were laid to rest? Oh, good question. Um, well, my grand, my father is buried in, in Delaware. He was cremated. And um, my grandfather, I honestly don't know where he's buried. I think um, Uncle Marshall and Annie Shalom are buried in Yonkers in that cemetery we went to, I think. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not really not sure. You're frozen. I... From your family? What's that? Yeah, you were frozen for a while, so. Was anyone of your family in California? Yes. Uh, um, my cousin Marshall, who's Ishu's son, uh, now lives in California. And when, um, and we're going to have a Zoom with him on Wednesday. Um, and my grandfather, uh, my grandmother was a little bit older than he was, and she died. Earl before him, and he remarried uh, Alice. I don't know her last name, but they lived in Turlock. Okay. He moved out with her, and she had a farm uh, in Turlock. And it was somebody he knew as a child in his uh, village. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think it means to live in the Assyrian diaspora? Like, how do, does it have any impact on you that there isn't a, an Assyrian homeland? Yeah, it makes me, it, it's, it's, it does. I, I feel angry about it. I, I think um, it's such a small group of people, but I think like when they, after World War I, the British asked them to help uh, police Iraq and promise them a ho homeland. A lot of broken promises is what gets me angry. A lot of, and I see it going on today. So, uh, yeah. And what's happening in the Middle East uh, gets me very upset. And I'm not a very religious, but the persecution of Christianity in the Middle East is just terrific. And um, if you had to say that you had any traits from your Assyrian background, what would you say they were? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, oh, geez. What would I say about my Assyrian background? Uh, I have a appreciation for nature, which my grandfather definitely had, and um, a love of learning I definitely got from my father and wanting to constantly read and learn. And, uh, and I guess my artwork, I don't really sell it that much, although right now it's pretty impossible to do anything, but it's a desire to tell my story, to tell the story of my life and who I am. And I don't know if that comes from my family. I think part of it is being a Syrian and nobody understanding what that is. So it's like, what's my journey? Who am I? So. I understand that. Yeah. Um, I uh, found a book that you might be interested in. It's written for children. It's um, My Life Beyond the Mountains. Uh-huh by the missionary Shed's niece based on family stories. Oh, oh I would be interested. And my life beyond the mountains, you said? Is beyond, my, my home, excuse me, my home is beyond the mountains. Um, and the author's name is Lotridge, L-O-T-R-I-D-G-E. I, I won't remember it otherwise. Kathy, come back. <laughs> I'm back. I got a pen. Okay. 
My life beyond the mountains. Okay. So her name. Uh, the woman's name is Celia Lotridge, L-O-T-T-R-I-D-G-E. And um, it's about orphans going down to Bakuba and Hamadan. And actually, Shed's daughter went back to Iran and escorted 300 orphans back to Ermia to see if there, were any, there was any family left. Oh, wow and tried to place them in homes. Her father had been killed in the great running. Um, you know, he died. And so she, she had been sent away to go to school in the United States and wanted to return. Uh -huh. but, um, I also, I've been, I have a bibliography I can share with you that I, I think you'd like. Um, and so I'm also wondering at this point, is there anything that we did not ask that you, you would like to tell us? Uh, I'm trying to think. No, I think they were very good questions. They're very excellent. Yeah. Um, I just have one question. Sure. Um, what, what was it like going through those letters? Um, uh, very intense. They, they were, they just sort of brought me back there. They were very, very intense. And, uh, my grandmother had, Alzheimer's and so I sort of had remembered her through the Alzheimer's and she had been such a heroine then she took in my grandfather's family and you know when they when they were raising my father and uncle they half the Assyrian relatives lived with them and, and she was just very giving so that was one thing I felt and just felt intensely for my grandfather for when he was born. yeah I'm sure yeah have Ever wish you could go back to visit? Visit Iran? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to. I don't think I want to go right now, but <laughs> but yes, I would love to go to their village. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Kathy. Thank you so much for today. Yeah. Well, yeah thank thanks, you. Kathy. I appreciate it to be able to share my story. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank have nice a good to meet you. Take yeah. care. Okay. Bye. 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 Michael.